Welcome into our very first Big East fall sports update of the season. I'm Megan Caffrey, joined alongside John Fanta. We have a great show ahead for you today, filled in with some of our guests, Butler's Paige Monahan and Creighton's Ikeem Ward. We have interviews with them coming up a little bit later in the show. But John, a great start for our fall sports this weekend. What were some of the wins that stood out to you? In men's soccer, there were several statement-making victories on Friday. Providence and Creighton really impressed with the way that they opened things up. A draw impressed me. Butler going to Akron and getting a 2-2 tie. That is a type of result that can go a long way. And then on top of that, you gotta love what you see out of Creighton and Marquette Volleyball. I really liked what I saw out of them, so I know we'll get to a lot of those wins, but that's what impressed me. Now let's kick things off as we always do with our top five plays of the weekend. Let's do it. Number five, we are starting in Indy. Paige Monahan, the Big East Offensive Player of the Week. Setting the tone in this one for the Dogs. One of two goals for her on the day in a national statement-making win around NCAA soccer. Four to one over number 20, Notre Dame. And the Blue Jays took down number 11 Clemson Two nothing for their first game of the season. Ziad Ferris with the winner here. John, he checked in in the 37th minute. He scores this just a minute after. Unbelievable. His very first goal as a Blue Jay. Speed kills, and for Creighton, it does right there. Akeem Ward with the assist. We stay with the Jays. And number three, all the way out to LA. Top 15 showdown. Creighton and Kentucky in the fifth set. This is volleyball at its best. And Kirsten Bernthal Booth, she has put together a four-time Big East champion, and they just start right where they left off with the win. And how about Alex DaCosta? He gets the win here for Providence men's soccer. From 18 yards out, top of the goal, they beat SMU in double overtime right there. They showed composure to get that win. So, so clutch. What a rocket from DaCosta. At number one. It's the wall of Big East women's soccer. Ariel Sheckman for the Georgetown Hoyas, their all-time shutouts leader. Add this to her tally. Two of her eight saves on the day in a draw with nationally ranked Duke. And how about two of her eight saves right there within about, what, a couple seconds of one another? Absolutely. <laughs> She's a spectacular player. Sheckman is the kind of goalkeeper that could drive Georgetown all the way to the College Cup this year. And we're going to look forward to trying to watch that happen. Now let's look a little bit closer at some of our men's soccer from this past weekend. Nine of the teams got into action on Friday night. Six won and two Big East teams notched top 11 wins on Friday night as well. That's right. We've talked about three of those. Achara and Georgetown beating South Carolina in OT. But what really stood out to me again is Providence. Last year, this is a Friar squad that only won five games, Megan. They struggle to get the W's to go down to SMU, a top 10 opponent, and get a clutch win like this against an SMU offense that's very potent. That says a lot to me. It shows composure. It shows maturity in that team that they're able to hold SMU into double overtime and come away with the win. Absolutely unbelievable for the Providence Friars. Yeah, it says a lot about this Friar squad and look out for them to make a move up in the conference this year. And how about DePaul Monday night getting a win of their own as well? Huge for them. Yeah, Mark Bakken, his first win as the DePaul head coach. There's the goal, a difference maker in the victory over Western Michigan. A statement win for DePaul. And here's Coach Plotkin. Uh, pretty unbelievable. Um, but I'm just proud of our guys. I mean, the effort they put forth for 90 minutes. I mean, if anybody was out here, they could just kind of sense just how amazing these guys are and how much they're willing to work for each other and just dig in and you know find that that fighting spirit that we have um, that we've been talking about ever since we took over and we're just so excited for them they deserve every ounce of joy they get out of this and it's just fantastic Michael Maharo on that goal and John I think you mentioned a little bit earlier were those new uniforms that they were yeah, rocking those are sharp threads I like those blue demon threads I have to get myself one I like the stripe now we mentioned a little bit of Creighton's men's soccer kicking off their season with a huge win on Friday but that was not the only Creighton team who came away with a win on opening day. The women's volleyball team, a huge win over number five, Kentucky, in five sets. This is what Creighton does. They've been such a great addition to 
the Big East, and as the conference enters year six since realignment, uh, these two programs have put together some special results, volleyball in particular. Kirsten Bernthal Booth has set the standard in this league, and Jaylee Winters is the player to watch all season, Big East VB fans, because she was tremendous. The All-American, 25 kills. And in the fifth set, she I watched a couple of the interviews after, and she was just speaking of how well her team was holding their composure throughout that fifth set. And she gave all the credit to her team, but she got that game winner right there, which was absolutely awesome to watch. They held off Kentucky twice before they ended up winning in the fifth set. What they do, and this is a, a Creighton team that actually almost was able to, to knock off the tournament host in USC. Went to a five-set match. Just a tough heartbreaker, but Coach Booth, she makes sure, Megan, that Creighton gets challenged in the non-con because that goes a long way with the NCAA Tournament Committee. And for the Jays, they want to get to that Final Four down the road. That's the program's goal. And Coach Booth does a great job of trying to prepare them as much as she can for the NCAA Tournament down the road. And John, speaking of teams who have been facing a challenging non-conference schedule the butler women's soccer team they're off to a hot start at 3-0 and yeah friday may have been for the jays opening day but sunday that was for the dogs it was national dog day did you know that it was national dog day do you have any dogs i do have a little puppy at home how about yourself i, I have two dogs way back in ohio that i love oh we send them our love to yeah today. my previous co-host didn't have any dogs he didn't like animals oh that's such a shame yeah he went to syracuse so i'm gonna like send animals. a puppy his way that's right uh butler what more can you say? They're known for the defense, Megan. That's their strength, typically. That's what they've always preached. But I think what stands out to me about Butler this year is that they've got the scoring. Mm -hmm. It's not just Paige Monahan, but this is a team that can build up from the back. Butler can challenge Georgetown for that conference championship again. And with the way that the tournament goes, conference sites, that top spot for regular season champ in Big East women's soccer will be so coveted because last year Georgetown hosts Butler. Big difference between Shaw Field and the Butler Bowl. A big difference there. So it'll be intriguing to see how women's soccer plays out this year between two sets of dogs in the Hoyas and Bulldogs. And I spoke with one of the Butler Bulldogs, Paige Monahan, and we had a little conversation about their big win over Notre Dame then looking ahead to the rest of the season. We welcome in Big East Offensive Player of the Week, Paige Monaham. She led Butler past number 20 Notre Dame on Sunday with two goals. Paige, how great was it to get such a statement win so early on in the season? Yeah, I mean, obviously Notre Dame, a great team, ranked, have all the accolades, talented players, great coaches. But I think it was great to have our team have that win, um, especially having the goal early on, I think was a huge statement for us. But we had a lot of people step up, and I think it was good. You know, obviously felt good. <laughs> You're off to a 3-0 start this year. Last time at this time in the year, you guys were 1-1-1. One, one, and one. What's been the mindset this season to get you off to such a commanding start? Yeah, I mean, our team last year was talented, and we unfortunately lost some seniors who made a huge impact at Butler University. But um, this year, it's kind of that what's happening now and what can we focus on in the present? And then once that's over, we're on to the next. So even though Notre Dame, our IPUI, Kent State, Notre Dame, all awesome, we're already focusing on the next game, which is Dayton. Um, just taking it one game at a time and preparing uh, for every game. Speaking of Dayton, you're on the road again with them this weekend. And then you also are facing Kansas, another ranked team with the Jayhawks. How has this non-conference schedule really motivated you guys to become even better? Yeah, so obviously it's like talented, the teams we are playing this year, and I think all the teams we are playing have different styles. So even between the last three games that we've played, they've all provided different um, attacks for us and challenges, but I think it's how we adapt to it. And just like Dayton, I think going on the road will be a challenge for us, and then the quick turnaround in Kansas will also be a challenge. But um, I think the team is excited for it and focused and, you know, just taking it one game at a time. Now, besides you... The other goal scorers for you this season, it is early on, but they've been freshmen who have scored the other goals for you this season. Mm -hmm. So how is this freshman class really setting the standards for themselves? You know, they are a 
group of humble individuals, but work hard, and I love it. They are competitive, they're feisty, and no matter how many minutes on, on the field they have, whether it's 70 or two, they always make a difference. So, you know, Morgan Klusterman, Anya Savage, just really making a difference. And it's awesome and exciting because, in my opinion, how the freshman class adapts to the culture, it really affects the team. And I think it's obviously affecting the team for the better this year, which is super exciting. What type of energy do they bring to the team? You know, they're a bunch of goofballs. Like, I will be completely honest. Like, <laughs> but um, they're awesome, you know, and super open to learning. And they really do enjoy the process and trust everything that the seniors and juniors and sophomores are telling them, advising them, and even just showing them with their work ethic. And they're just fully invested this year, which is so exciting. And it um, really makes me feel comfortable as a senior and enjoys every moment of this. Do you maybe see a little bit of yourself in some of these freshmen in this class? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I hope so, because they're funny, you know? <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I think the competitive fight and in the freshmen, and even actually the transfers, is so awesome. And I think that's something our team relishes, is that competitive edge and always wanting to be better personally and as a group. Speaking of always wanting to be better personally, you're one of 45 women who are part of the 2018 Mac Herman Trophy watch list. So how, does, how has that motivated you in your senior season? Yeah, so I mean, it's been crazy and I'm so fortunate and lucky with everything that has happened in my soccer career, but even it's kind of, I'm not gonna say, oh, it's not a big deal. It's obviously an honor, but it's preseason stuff. And even the weekly honors, it's all things on the past. So I'm just hoping to keep getting better in the future and it motivates me to keep going. And um, you know, my teammates motivate me, my coaches motivate me, and just gives me that driving factor of just keep going and never settle for anything because every day is a blessing. So. How have you developed as a player from your freshman year to now to be on such a prestigious watch list? <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually have to thank my dad. Um, he just always told me, like, short memory with everything. You know, in college soccer, you're not going to score a goal every game. You're not going to have a great game every game, but it's what you're doing. Um, every other moment, you know, so short memory, uh, forget the good things, forget the great things, forget the bad things, and just keep working and just be relentless always. And I think that's really been my motivation throughout the past four years. So I have to thank my dad for that one. When you go home on breaks, do you ever play a game of pickup soccer with your dad? <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, he's more of a basketball, you know, kind of guy. <laughs> okay, okay. But, yeah, you know, I have siblings, so we always mess around. Uh, my mom plays soccer, so yeah, I have that with me, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not going to try and play a little one-on-one -on -one against you? <laughs> no, he'll say in the day he could have got me, but not anymore. <laughs> what are you going to be, where can we find you when you're not out practicing and putting in the extra work? What are some of the things that you like to do off the field? Oh, off the field, that's a good question. You know, I really enjoy, like, working out, which I feel like is a very student athlete thing. <laughs> uh, but working out, yoga, um, I really do love watching sports. Uh, we went to the boys game, stuff like that. I'm trying to think, wow, what do I do? It's kind of busy. <laughs> but yeah, just school. Um, I work part time, actually, for a company that I work for this summer. So yeah, it's fun, you know. <laughs> do you ever get some team bonding and say, hey, let's all go to yoga? Maybe not hot yoga because you sweat enough on the soccer field. Maybe just a nice <laughs> yoga class to stretch it out on non-game days, non-practice days. Yeah, so you know what, actually as a team, we're all about supporting um, our athletes and especially the women athletes. Unfortunately, I think there's um, obviously more fans for the men's team, which is still great and awesome, go men. But uh, we even prioritize going to volleyball games just to show our support. And we do that as a team a lot. I mean, they have a game, a couple games a week. So yeah, go volleyball, go women's sports, all about that. So yeah, we do that. I'm trying to think what else. We like to eat. <laughs> Who doesn't like to eat, right? Favorite snack? Ooh, favorite snack. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I could do favorite dessert. I would say there's this great place in Broad Ripple and it's, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's like ice pops, but there's like custardy ones and like my favorite's toasted coconut with like some dark chocolate. Well, I okay. know where I need to go when I come and visit <laughs> Butler. Paige, yeah. thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. I appreciate it as well. John, one of the things that really stood out to me in that conversation with Paige was 
how much she was talking about the freshmen with how they are making a difference this season and they're coming in, putting in the hard work. And she said that she saw a little bit of herself in them. And I really just, I love it when a new freshman class comes in and they're making a statement. That's right. That's what programs are built on. You have veterans who are going to lead, but when you are winning and stringing years of success together, it's because of freshman classes pushing those veterans to get to a higher level. And that's what Butler Women's Soccer is trying to do. That's what they've done since the Big East realigned. It's been a program that has put together some really strong years. And speaking of freshmen, we had some really great freshmen stand out in standouts in our women's volleyball this weekend. Actually, two women's mm. volleyball teams are left undefeated at this after this weekend. Villanova at 3-0 and St. John's at 4-0. Good to see for the Red Storm and the Wildcats to get off to those starts. Obviously, Creighton getting past number five, Kentucky. And for St. John's, it's Rochelle Rostelli, who's been really good for them thus far this season. The freshman of the week, a uh, very impressed performance. And then I, I look at Marquette, they're two and one. Allie Barber, the Big East reigning offensive player of the year, the preseason offensive player of the year, and now the offensive player of the week. We're going to be taking <laughs> a lot of trips to the barber shop this season. Oh, yeah. What more could you want? She just keeps all of the awards mm. coming, she, proving just how much of an asset she really is out there for her team. When you think about Barber and Jaylee Winters mm. going up against each other, that's going to be must-see Big East volleyball. Creighton Marquette has become a great rivalry in this league. And then maybe, you know, down the road, we can maybe get them to do a little one-on-one -on -one match. This that would be enough. interesting. You're setting, e you're setting one <laughs> I'm up, setting I'm setting the other up? I don't know. If i got to get my setting going. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Well, well, we'll try. We'll see how it goes. Back in the day, I tried it. It didn't go the best. <laughs> I wish I could say I tried it. I got the height, but I always... I I'll give you some tips. It. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Perfect. Now let's take a look at some of our Big East Weekly Honors of the Week. Men's and women's soccer right here. We have volleyball award winners as well. We talked about Ali Barber and then Martha Kanavadov, the Marquette defensive setter. She is a, an interesting player for them. Now a sophomore, really impressed at times last year. So Coach Ryan Thies really likes uh, the way that she can play. And, and then I look at women's soccer, Monahan and Schmidt. Annika Schmidt is just as important as Paige Monahan is for Butler. Schmidt really is the glue player for the Dogs defense. Shelby Hogan in net for a Providence team that has not allowed a goal in the first 270 minutes of the season. That's incredible. That That is a stat to watch out for and continue to follow. And then let's take a look at men's soccer to round this out. I look at Brandon Gold from mm -hmm. Butler, uh, the junior, who really did some nice things for them this past weekend. You see Akeem Ward on there. And then how about Seton Hall? Coach Andreas Slimberg and his Pirates, he gets his first win as the head coach of the Hall. And Tibbling had both goals in the victory. They're in action against Central Connecticut State tonight. And then we've got a new Greek freak, right, for, for Georgetown. I think Giannis, Giannis Nikopolitis, uh, the goalkeeper, just a freshman, He's the goalkeeper of the week, so there's some young talent in BE football as well. I love seeing that. And we mentioned a little bit earlier how Paige Monahan was on the 2018 Mac Herman Trophy watch mm -hmm. list. Well, Brandon Goal is on there as well. So we have a lot of Big East talent representing on that, which is going to be a, a really fun award to keep our eyes out for all, all season. It will be. Several candidates for it. And that Defensive Player of the Week, Akeem Ward, he joined us from Omaha earlier. Well, how about the Creighton Blue Jays? They have two shutouts to start this season for the first time since 2015. The big reason for that is the Big East Defensive Player of the Week, Akeem Ward. Akeem, the win over Clemson on Friday doesn't get better than that, right? Beating a nationally ranked opponent 2 nothing in Omaha? Yeah, it was, it was great. It was great atmosphere, great team effort, and... Um, I think it was all around just great showing from us, and I was super proud of the guys and super thankful for the fans that came out. It was a big turnout, and it was a big win, so yeah. All right, I'm guessing in the post-game locker room, you beat the 11th-ranked team in the country. There's got to be celebration. Who's the best dancer on this team? Um, I'd have to give that probably to uh, Joel Rystrand. He loves to do a little popping and locking, and he, he likes to dance in the locker room, and it's, it's, it's good fun. Little pop and lock. What's your move? 
Um, I don't know. I don't really have a move, honestly. Uh, I just, I just go with it. I go with the flow, you know. You're on the top drawer soccer uh, men's team of the week as well, and you and your defense, only one shot on goal allowed the entire weekend to shut out yeah. efforts. What's been the key? I don't know. I think uh, this back four is, it was a little bit closer, um, and we were actually kind of together last year, three of us were, uh, except for Eunice. He just transferred in. But I think that before the beginning of the season, Coach talked to us about uh, how back in the past there was a record that was set uh, for Creighton for the least amount of goals scored. And we kind of took that personally, like, maybe we can get after that. And I think with this back four and with our goalkeeper that we can actually – uh, maybe have a run at that and just be stronger and be tougher and not allow goals. And I think that's going to be our motto. It's going to help us win games because defense first and then we can attack. Does this back line remind you of any uh, professional back lines? Um, I don't know in particular. I think we're, we're different in a sense. It's, it's, I think it's really interesting, though, because we have a player from Belgium and then we have a German and then we have a guy from Texas and a guy from Virginia. So it's, it's kind of different from any college team I've seen, and that could be related to the pros because the pros have guys from different countries, and um, that's why, how I can relate it. But other than that, I think we're, we're, we're different in a sense, and, and I like that difference, and I think it helps us. I know that you transferred in, but being originally from Virginia, what was life like when you, you got into Omaha for the first time? Um... It wasn't actually too crazy, honestly, because I actually went to boarding school in Minnesota for four years. So I was not too kind of foreign of the Midwest. Um, it was actually bigger. Omaha is bigger than the, the, the town I was in for high school, uh, Faribault, Minnesota. So it was actually not a, a too big of a change. It was actually a better change, I thought, if anything. Um, it was a bigger city, um, and I just like kind of how the city is behind the team and uh, the fan support in the community, and I just... It, it all clicked and gelled, and I, I was just, I wouldn't take that decision back. Where's your favorite place to eat in Omaha? Um, block 16. It's kind of a, in the hole in the wall. It's, it's a really good restaurant. It has uh, different types of burgers, um, poutine burger. They have different types of fries. It's, it's really good, especially on, on an off day. Great, great, great meal. How much different is the mentality of this Creighton team from last year's? Um, I think it's a big difference. Um, I think it, it goes to, to show the fact that after we lost to St. John's, we waited for a full year to, to get back on the field. And most of the guys, it was a core group that was still here, and we returned, and we, we kind of vowed that we don't really want that feeling again. We don't want to be uh, falling short of our, of our goals and of the Creighton standard, as we call it. And the Big East first round is, is way below the Creighton standard. And um, I think this year we'll do, we'll do big things, and I'm really excited for that. Akeem Ward, the Big East Defensive Player of the Week. Congrats on a great opening weekend. Good luck in the future. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now, John, these big wins get you national recognition. Let's take a look at some of the national rankings of our Big East teams. No surprise there, Georgetown Hoyas for the women at number 11. And then look, the men's soccer is filled with men who are ranked and receiving votes. Life is good for the dogs on the pitch as well, with both men's and women's teams being ranked. The women getting to number 25 with the big win over Notre Dame. And of course, in field hockey, it's important to remember the number one team in the country plays in the Big East. That's the UConn Huskies. Liberty, who hosts the Big East tournament this mm -hmm. year, is number 23. And there's some belief that Liberty could give UConn everything they could handle and more, especially on their home turf in the tournament. That could be a fun development down the road in Big East field hockey. Oh, yeah, they had a huge win this weekend, a 6-1 to one win over number 17-ranked James Madison. So that's going to be exciting to see how they play out with one another throughout the season. Well, everyone, we thank you so much for tuning in for our first Big East Fall Sports Update of the season. We will have many more. Welcome to the team. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the team. <laughs> Megan Caffrey, uh, you'll see her all over our studio coverage now and across the 22 sports throughout the year. We're so happy to have you. and. Uh, you're a great talent, and welcome to our team. Well, thank you very much, John. I'm very excited and privileged to cover 
all of the Big East teams throughout the season. I'm excited to really get my hands dirty with all the coverage. That's right. Big East fans, get used to Megan Capra all over your coverage. It's going to be awesome. And we'll be back next week for another fall sports update for you. Be sure to tune in to Big East Digital Network.